I'm tired, but do you know what time it is? I do know what time it is. It is time once again for everybody's favorite show. Jerry and J-Rob cover it all. About to be brought to you in person. That's what I understand. Yeah, I hear some big things are coming. Big things are coming. I think we can go ahead and say it right now because by the time I get this produced, it will already be official. Well, so. th- get it out there then. Well, yours truly, J-Rob, and our former uh, uh, guest of ours, Jason are official owners of a coffee shop. Nice. In Bertram, Texas. You ready for the name? I Yeah, I haven't heard one yet, so throw it at me. All right, so the coffee is going to be BTX Coffee. Okay. And we have a storyline that goes along with it, and it's going to be a little bit kid-affiliated because we are located in the Bertram, Texas Library. It's kind of like our own little... Barnes and Noble Starbucks relationship, but better coffee. And um, we've got some stuff going on where we're going to involve the community and do some stuff for kids, and it'll be a treat place for them as well. So I'm really excited about it. But what it means for you, Jerry and J. Rob listeners, all six and a half of you, <laughs> is that you can come and see us in person, and we'll be doing a live podcast from that coffee shop. Every Wednesday morning, I believe. We're still yeah. kind of working out the times and days, but it looks like it's every Wednesday. So I'm really looking forward to that, and um, I think it's going to be fun. Well, it sounds uh, like an amazing opportunity to serve the community and and also be uh, situated to, to do some good. I agree, and on top of all that, we've already made it a – part of our business model that there will be a probably a monthly donation to some charitable organization that we deem necessary. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that as well. So hopefully we'll make some decent money and give away some decent money. So that's always exciting to me to give away some stuff. Um, it's also exciting to me that you own a coffee shop because I happen to drink coffee as do I. Now, it has been watered down decaf coffee, I have to admit. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's, it. you know, two weeks ago I had no idea this was coming. And here we are. So, yeah. You know, that's the thing about uh, sometimes circumstances evolve and change and you have a plan and you don't see something that's coming, whether whether it's positive or negative, right? Right. And then uh, things pop up in life, and you've got to learn to be able to to pivot and move and make decisions. And, right. And, uh, yeah, I hope it works out. Which I know good. it's going to work out. It'll work out one way or another. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, hopefully for, for, for the good, right? Uh, so, so what's our topic today? Well, today we're going to uh, talk a little bit about... The evolution of circumstances. I like that. You said that a while ago, and I like yeah. that. It's got a nice ring to it. Yeah. Evolution of circumstances. And so what I what I mean by that is uh, just exactly what I, I said a moment ago. You know, circumstances change. Life happens. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we, we we don't live. We're not islands all by ourselves out here. And so um, you've got the things that other people do that uh, have bearing on our personal circumstances. And then uh, just the natural flow of of things, right? right? So, so you may wake up one day with an idea about a direction that you're going, what you want to accomplish, and and the way things are, and then you get a call, or right. you get uh, a letter in the mail, or you know you get to work and find out, oh, you don't work there anymore, <laughs> <laughs> or, or you know, or, or sorry, and, that's and you. not just negative things, but, right. but positive things as well, right. you right. know. But uh, a lot of times. <clears throat> It's been my experience that, uh, that there, you have to have at least a, a, a certain level of expectation that those things are going to happen and an idea about how you might be able to, to, to deal with them. Just, just a base skill level of being able to um, take the things that come at you, um, make the decisions that need to be made, act on them, and then move forward. So that uh, even if you do get blindsided, you're not just knocked out. Right, right. 
And, and we're all alone on that journey, right? Oh, no. No, we've got, uh, you should have a support system. And uh, obviously, you know, the Lord is there uh, all the time to help you out. Right, right. Well, yeah, I think you, you, you've already hit it on the head. It's making that pivot. And you said that a while ago. Making the pivot no matter what the circumstance is, right? So, like I said, two weeks ago, I had no intentions of owning a coffee shop. Suddenly an opportunity came up, and out of nowhere, it made itself available, and here we are today, right? But that happens with good things and bad things, just like you were saying. It's sometimes these things are brought to you because they're they're a blessing for you. Maybe maybe God has something in, in mind for you and a desire for you to go a certain direction or to prevent you from going a certain direction. Mm. And then sometimes we have bad things that happen and we've talked about it in the past. You know, what do you do when you, when you have a bad circumstance, how do you deal with it? You know, um, I know for me that, you know, a a bad circumstance seems to be a good attention grabber spiritually for me. Right. Mm -hmm. How am I going to deal with, especially those situations where you don't know how it's going to end up. You don't know what the final result is going to be. And it makes you a little bit more dependent upon God and what, what needs to be done to, um, make that situation the best it can be, but the the circumstances of life that come up, once again, good or bad. How do you deal with that stuff when you when it's at a you know a moment's notice? You know, I know for me that's kind of how I live and it's normal for me. But a lot of people, they, you know, my my lovely wife back there, she's got to have it, everything planned out, and I don't plan anything out. I'm just I just roll with it. Yeah. So uh, a lot of folks, how do they deal with that? when something comes up that's good something that comes up with bad and I'll, I'll give you a couple of responses that i commonly see on the bad side i see the first thing is what can i do to fix this sometimes it's not within your capability to fix something sometimes right. it's up to god sometimes it's up to somebody you know sometimes you got to go ask for help or um, people will just shut down and kind of go into, into lockdown mode and just try to shield through the storm, right? Mm-hmm. And hope for the best outcome. Um, let's say you have an opportunity comes up all of a sudden. Good opportunity, should be should do something with it. It's funny because I will find that a lot of people will vapor lock in the same manner because they won't want to take the risk or they won't have the resources or the planning to be able to handle something like that. And it just scares them to death because it sounds really exciting and a lot of fun, you know, especially in business adventures, because this is what I've, what I've experienced quite often is I will jump into a business, uh, adventure, adventure, a business venture and run with it. And I'm not, I'm not fearful of results so much, but there's a lot of people that will want a situation to come up like that. And then when it hits them, they won't know what to do. And out of fear, they will, you know, retract back to where they were and, and kind of give up on the idea of whatever it was. If you have a good idea and you have a good opportunity to do something, I highly recommend pushing forward. You bypass those voices in your head. If the plan is there and the stuff is there to make it happen, you should go for it. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, in my own personal life, there have been times where opportunities have presented themselves. And my initial thought was, man, that's great. I'd love to do that. Um, but then the, the longer I thought on it, the more fearful I became, not necessarily of getting involved in the opportunity, but it always came down to, well, if it doesn't work out. Mm-hmm. And so that fear of failure um, can keep you from, from taking a hold of those opportunities. And honestly, you know, even the negative things that we have, there's opportunities in those as well. You're right. Uh, opportunity for growth, opportunity for learning experience. And so, you know, even the negative has positive connotations. Um, but just being able to look at the overall scope of what has come to you, recognizing that, you know, there there is something there for me, whether, again, positive or negative, there's always something there, right? And then being able to, to take action. Um, you said a moment ago about, you know, fixing things. 
uh, here's another mindset that I have seen is this uh, the overcomer you know we're just gonna overcome it we're just gonna get through it well some things don't need to be overcome some things need to be worked through right. some things need to be fixed some things do need that attention or the uh, the old head in the sand mm -hmm. and if I just act like it's not there if I if, if I can't see it it must not be there right right put that piece of tape over the engine light it's yeah. fine <laughs> out of sight Keep on out running. of mind um, so what uh, give us an example uh, give us another example of, of uh, a time when when something popped up you know you got the coffee shop thing popped mm -hmm. up you weren't expecting it and right. and so you had to make some some quick decisions you had to pivot right and uh, make a choice right. and move forward um, and I know that some great things are going to come out of that um, well I certainly hope so and believe so and I want to include discernment in all that as well because even though this came up this came up under a time pressure and typically, I don't like anybody to put a time pressure on me because that usually means it's not for me. Um, there are opportunities or, you know, you know self-considered opportunities that are not always opportunities. They, they come up, let's say it's a good deal on a vehicle or a good deal on a house that, yeah. you, that you're interested in. And you can make it happen, but... It's probably not your best interest, especially financially. Sure. And I've experienced this quite often in life, where, especially as a young man, because I, I went through cars, I went through boats, we went through things like that. And I had no business buying most of that stuff, but I could make it happen. And uh, I made it happen, and then it wasn't too long. We're like, man, what do I do to get rid of this thing? Yeah. i got to sell this thing. It's, making, you know, it's killing me. So... There is a difference, and I think a lot of that is staying in tune with with the opportunity along with discernment. Discernment will keep you straight most of the time, will, will keep you out of a bind most of the time, um, but it will let you look at something and challenge your motivation. What is your motivation in this opportunity? Is it just self-serving or is it also, is there, is there something bigger to it? And as you go through that, you get a little bit more fine-tuned into, you know what, this sounds good, but something's bothering me about it. And usually that is a very, very good indicator of, eh, maybe it's not for you. Right. It may sound good, it may look good, but this deal may not be for you. You might need to move on to the next one. Um, you know, some things come up fast, some things do have deadlines that, that appear, but if everything looks right and the numbers are right and you have the right support and the right things to happen to make that a success, if there's nothing else holding you back and it's, and it's a good opportunity, I, most of the time I'm going to say go for it. It's, it's worth doing if everything else is in line. But those, those little indicators, the little things that sound weird, I had somebody um, approach me two weeks ago, three weeks ago, and they're affiliated with a, uh, the movie industry and they're people I know, you know, it's not, um, it's not some sketchy person out in the middle of nowhere that I've never met, <laughs> but it's somebody I know coming out of the darkness. That's right. Trench coat. That's right. So that I've met. I've, I've actually been around a little bit and there was an opportunity where they were, they're working out this multi-million dollar, uh, TV series, movie series thing. Um, that's being funded out of a foreign country. Well, that's fine. But there was some circumstance, some clause, where they needed some initial cash to open up a uh, account in the UK and get money moved over. Yeah, it's exactly mm. what it sounded like. Now, at the end of the day, it sounded pretty decent. It sounded fairly legit. But, but the amount of money they were asking me to put into it, I asked them if they had it, and they said yes. And I said, then why don't you do it? What's why? Why would you give me this great opportunity if you can turn around and make all this money doing it? And ultimately, the answer was we didn't. They didn't want to risk their money. Well, then it ain't for me. <laughs> if, but if but it you ain't for you. It, if it ain't for you, it ain't for me. <laughs> so uh, that that's one of those things. It's have some discernment. Yeah. So not everything that comes to you is meant for you. Right. Right. And uh, I think a big way that we can. Uh, tell the difference you talked about c getting to the place where you know through discernment you learn to kind of pick up on on things that will help uh, to give wisdom 
Um, so another area that, that can help us, you know, I may not have the, the experience or the, the knowledge base about a certain circumstance or something that, that comes to me. Um, but as we, as we mentioned before, we're not alone right. in all this. So, so in those times, it's good to be able to lean on our support base, family and friends, pastors, uh, people that, uh, especially people who are knowledgeable in the area in which our life is now changing and, and evolving. Our circumstances is, is becoming, uh, you know, something we, we didn't expect maybe or an opportunity has arisen that we don't know much about. Um, so we can, we can lean on those, those in our lives who may have knowledge that we don't have right. and wisdom that we don't have. Some, sometimes there are things that come only through experience, but it is wisdom to say, I don't have the experience, but someone else does. I'm going to ask them and see what they right. think about it. Right. You may not get the answers you want to hear, but. Maybe it prevents you from going down a road you don't want to go down as well. So For sure. the, the the pivot in the circumstance, this this is what I, I really like about this is, you know, I'm not speaking out of both sides of my mouth. So so we started out saying, hey, don't sometimes it's not for you to fix right away. Right. It's not mm-hmm. it's not always within your power. But at the same time, you shouldn't curl up on the couch and just slowly fade away as well. So it, th- there are opportunities in bad situations, just like there's good opportunities in good situations, right? No matter how bad something can get, there are ways to pivot, ways to change direction, ways to change kind of what's going on in that situation. Now, a lot of times we're meant to go through those situations because there's a learning, mm. there's a learning cause that we need to we need to figure out, or that we need to get some wisdom through. And um, some of those situations are made for that. They're made for you to figure it out, think a little bit, put your, put your Put your uh, mind to it and see what can be done to make that situation better or even, you know, better than what you thought it could be before it went bad. You know, there's lots of things that can happen in in, uh, in those scenarios. So all I'm saying is if you got something coming up, don't don't be fearful. I think mean, that's the number one thing. It doesn't matter if it's good or bad. Don't be fearful of it. Right. Um, for me, I'm going to talk to God. We're going to have a conversation about it, and I'm going to try to give it as much time as I can for me to listen and to make sure I'm not putting my personal endeavors in, in the way of that, mm-hmm. that it's going to block me out from hearing what he has to say. Uh, the other option of that is I'm going to ask somebody like you, and I may ask an expertise in that field, but at the end of the day, I've learned enough now to know that I need to get some kind of wisdom other than just my own most of the time in those circumstances. And it takes a long time to, to wrap your head around that and get, get uh, squared away on asking for help or asking for knowledge from somebody else on how to deal with something because that's a pride thing, right? It's an ego right. thing. So anyway, uh, pivoting. Yeah. I mean, just, uh, <clears throat> I think at the end of the day, it comes down to being, being, both mindful and purposeful, you know, mindful of, of the circumstance as it comes to us, taking, you know, what, what knowledge we can gather from what's going on and, uh, being purposeful about making, making a choice, whether it's a choice to act or a choice not to act and understanding that, you know, the, the consequences that may come from that choice and, and whether or not we can be okay with, with those consequences. Right. All right. Well, very good. Very good. Anything else you want to add to it? You know, I'm, I'm excited. The weather's changing. It's fixed to start getting warm. We're fixed to start hitting some car shows and, Ooh. uh, got some community events coming up, Blue Bonnet Festival and, nice. and different things around. So very good. I'm sure we'll hear more about that in the, in the near future. Well, and come see us at BTX Coffee. We'd love to meet you in person. And once again, I, I'm pretty sure we're going to be on Wednesday mornings. We'll get that ironed out for the next episode or two. And uh, I believe we'll be starting that around April, beginning of April. So, excited. Exciting stuff. It is. It's coffee. Oh, and coffee. Coffee and hot sauce. Hot sauce.
coffee and hot sauce. You can't beat that. It's hot in your mouth, no matter what it is. <laughs> All right, you guys have a great week. Thanks for listening to us. Bye.